Hello and welcome to our next video blog. I thought it would be good to carry on talking to Andy Circus about some of the fun and games we had uh, during our first block of shooting. And the Andy, where is he? Andy, what is this place? This isn't Wellington. Where am I? Isn't this where James Bond crashed his Aston Martin in 1964? And isn't this where Red Grant trained to be an assassin at the beginning of From Russia With Love? You know what, I, I think we should just run the blog anyway. So what we did is we asked cast and crew to tell us a few of their favorite memories from the first three or four months of shooting. So please enjoy that and I'll go figure out where I am. What are the things that stand out for you the most from the first block? I think for me, the my, my favourite stuff we've done so far has been Gollum's Cave. Oh, was that precious? The way that Pete did that scene, it felt like I was watching a play. It was sort of like you could just sit back and watch these, these amazing guys do their thing. Him and Martin together were fantastic. It was really cool. <laughs> Trying to get back into the head of Gollum. I don't know if I ever told you this, but it felt like um, kind of doing an impersonation of a character that I'd played. <laughs> um, Yes. A, a long time. It was weird because it was like, you know, having to reown it again. No! Yeah, it was pretty cool. It was a nice I, way of starting. I felt sorry for Martin because he was suddenly thrust into having to find the character of Bilbo and have to deal with you for yeah. a whole week. <laughs> <laughs> Going at him the whole yeah. time. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it was supposed to have been a bit intimidating. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to be a good movie. <laughs> Check it out. After two years of, oh my God, when are we ever going to shoot this film? We had 13 dwarves and a hobbit. We might have had a, a wizard as well. And suddenly, it's real. Seeing the sets were like amazing. That was true. I mean, yeah. coming to Bag End for the first time and, and, and walking through. This is, that was our first day, wasn't it? Well, first yeah. day on the job. That was amazing. Can you name them? Name the dwarves. Ori Dori Nori, Biffa Boba, Biffa... That's a Boba Biffa, Ori Nori Dori Dori. I can never remember. See, that's the problem. You can't even remember who they are. You have Philly and Kelly. There's uh, Thorin, and there's Gloin, uh, and there's Oin, and uh, Dwalin and Balin, and there's Biffa, Boffa and Bomber, and then there are the three uh, Dori, Nori and Ori. I think that's it, isn't it? Jeez, I can't remember. Uh, I think so. <laughs> Thirteen Dwarves is one of the reasons why I dreaded The Hobbit and why I really didn't think I was going to make it for such a long time. But uh, the irony is it's turned out to be one of the joys of the film. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> what a challenge. I mean, 13 uh, heroes, or 14 with, with, with Bilbo. They all have to be differentiated in a way that isn't necessary in the book, but if you keep seeing them, you want to know who they are and, and, and uh, specifically and, and what their attitude is and why they're on this journey. We need to move now! Come on! Some of the best memories were um, in getting the dwarves ready. Everybody has helped these actors kind of find their way through lots of rubber and lots of hair. <laughs> Walking through Wetter and, and getting to see our designs and going, actually, God, I look amazing. I look the most amazing of anyone. That was probably the best day, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> when you all said, gee, Jed's amazing. That's an amazing yeah, We did, yeah. Some of them actually look pretty bad before they get into the prosthetic. Some of them, for, in fact, for some of them, a prosthetic is making them look better, to tell you the truth, uh, which says something. Uh, Mark Hadlow, for example, springs to mind. I have this lovely bit down here and then this moustache that comes up here. I look stunning. I actually, look, I should be in centrefold. One of the things that quite early on we discovered was that um, Mark Hadlow uh, likes to dress up in costumes, um, mainly sort of military type things. And the really weird thing about his sailor outfits is that um, below the waist, nothing. 
But again, you know, he's a nice bloke, though. A little bit of cap. A little bit of cap. One of them doesn't have to wear a beard. Yeah, well, we are all very, very jealous of that. Actually, he is the Aiden Turner. He's the sexy dwarf. I don't even think he's got a beard, actually. Mainly because he's not old enough to grow one. He needs the hot one, I suppose, if you like that kind of thing. But if you like knitted cardigans and <laughs> knitted mittens, then I'm your fellow. If there was a boy band in uh, in Middle Earth, he would be he would be, he would be the leader Williams. of the Robbie Williams yeah. of uh, of, yeah. of the dwarf world. world. Whereas you'd be <coughs> Rody, I think. Yeah, the Rody. Bomb would yeah. be a Rody. I think when people see the beards, beards are going to come back in big time. They are huge. Give us a kiss. Galak dashud ba. We've all learnt uh, a bit of the dwarf language, Kosdor, so we all have a, a, a kind of selection of words to fall back on, um, curses and battle cries. I mean, we speak dwarfish to each other most of the time when we're all the time. OK, here it goes. <coughs> and Peter can guess what it is, and then I'll tell people. Caused Belcour. Caused Belcour. Caused Belcour. Peter? Uh, <laughs> that means <laughs> mighty dwarf. And we had to do um, Trollshaw. Well, you got to do all the fun stuff in Trollshaw. Yeah, I we got did. To, we I had to shoot dialogue and things, and um, he got to do all the good fighting troll stuff. It is the great thing about the dwarves is that is that even though there's this comic element to some of the characters, not all of them, but but some of them, they when they when they fight, they really fight. We started with three months of intense training. We did stunt fighting, we did horse riding, we did the gym four times a week, we did dwarf movement yes. intensely. They were trying to get us to a point where they could actually kill us and bring us back from the dead, kill us, bring us back from the dead, all the CPR and stuff like that, because that's what it'll be like on set. They did it by breaking us down. Yeah. They did it by essentially reducing us to the absolute amoeba stage mm. and then building us up again as dwarfs. We've come through it as better dwarfs, I feel. I do too. We, I mean, I know that William's discovered his inner dwarf. I have, and no, we all have actually. It's a frightening thing, but um, so this is the job that had to be done. If I could say key moments uh, in block one, arriving in Rivendell and meeting Elrond and dining at his table, it really feels like you're stepping into Middle Earth. There are some who would not deem it wise. What do you mean? You're you not the only guardian to stand watch Richard? over Middle Earth. I, I remember it now, yeah. but yeah. Oof, oh, later on. Oof. I love working with Hugo and Kate. Back in Rivendell again, that was fantastic. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome. I still can't quite get over being on set with the Ian as Gandalf, and then, you know, Kate Blanchett with Gladriel and Hugo with Elron, and you just feel like you step back into a movie again. Mm -hmm. So, kind of weird. This is this a new one? This is different. Yeah, different one. High points, really, I think, was getting Kate Blanchett with a long train. Beautiful. Oh, Kate, that's beautiful. Yeah, that is. They're all going to want one. Just don't ask me to walk in. <laughs> One of the things that I like is that we're getting a little bit of the music into the movie too, the songs. Tolkien wrote quite a few songs for The Hobbit. I got to sing a song. You want to hum a few bars for us now? Oh, it's a classic song. Uh, uh, you know, it, it's after sort of Cole Porter and Gershwin and that type of thing. There's an inn, there's an inn, there's a merry old inn beneath an old grey hill. He squeaked and sawed and quickened the tune while the landlord shook the man in the moon. It's after three, he said. I think it'd be great if if Dwalin just yelled the whole thing. So the cat in the middle of the way, but I don't know. This is the Metallica version. Who is this? Get some Metallica music. Well, I'll be singing at the Oscars is a different matter, but um, hopefully some people might sing it in the shower. <laughs> oh, excuse me. <laughs> I think this is a Peter Jackson question. Which dwarf would you like to invite to dinner? Uh, um, well, you know, I wouldn't invite any of them except myself. Mm, I'm afraid that the, the table manners aren't of the best. But well, you get your fist when you do that! You? They would not want Biffa over for dinner. <laughs> he would be, like, at the bottom <laughs> of the line. Ori, because he'd be very polite. Excuse me. Well, it'd be me, obviously. Because um, yeah, I'd cook. 
Stephen Hunter does pretty well with the bad table manners. He just eats so much. Have you seen the size of him? I mean, oh, good Lord. He's enormous. I tried to talk to him about cutting down his cholesterol and his butter intake. I don't think he'd invite Nori because he'd steal all the silverware. You'd never invite Graham McTavish because yeah. he would sit there and glare at you and show his forearms. Right. Dwan's a real warrior. When he parties, he goes completely mad, like so many Scottish people. Here you go! <laughs> <laughs> well, the words kettle black calling pot come to mind. <laughs> I don't think you'd invite any dwarf to dinner, actually. I wouldn't have them all together, though. Not 13, maybe a couple at a time. <laughs> special, special person yeah. to meet here, John, John Rhys Davies. Yeah. It was fun on one of the days that we were in Bag End with the dwarves that John Rhys Davies came to visit. Oh, yeah? And yeah. Um, it was great to introduce him, not only to, to Gloin, who's his father in the story, but also to all the, all the other dwarves. Yeah. It's just like coming home to family. <laughs> I predicted what John would say, and he pretty much said it word for word. I could just imagine, you know, him saying, "Oh, you poor bastards!" <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 that's pretty much what he went on to say. You poor buggers! <laughs> when he gets you running up the hill in full armour, you'll enjoy that. <laughs> but you are going to be spectacular and you'll be chased by women all around the world. <laughs> <laughs> but, only, but only if you're in costume and makeup. <laughs> OK. All right. We've been here since January the 13th. So what is that, five months? And we haven't even scratched the surface. Who are you, Dublin Pete? Hey, I'm Dublin Dub Dub Stanley Kubrick. <laughs> <laughs> One of the biggest moments was when we all put our gear on and we all stood together, sort of looking around at each other into the characters' faces. To stand in a circle and look at the guys that were going on the quest, I got a real tingle up my spine. Lovely, thank you, that's terrific. I think we can check the gate on that. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Thanks, guys. Thanks very much. Thank you. Bittersweet moment, but it's time to leave. Hasta la vista. Then driving off. I'm waiting for somebody, sorry. There could have been even... I know. Just go. Oh, really? Yeah, just go. We've had enough. Go. Are you oh. ripped? No, I, I, I'm not ripped. They're keeping the good people. Okay. Oh, hey, go again. We'll go hey. Now. Ah. hey. Okay, we'll go now. It's a bittersweet moment, but it's time to leave. Hasta la vista. Uh. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. I don't know whether there'll be any more because I have to find New Zealand, which I've lost. I think it's over here. Who is that odd little fellow?